Well, hello everyone, welcome back to Connect Groups. So this is my first time this season to talk to you, so I just wanna take a moment and thank you. Thank you for being committed to your groups. I say this every season and I really mean it. The reason our church is able to grow in health is because you are willing to be a part of Connect Groups, connecting to each other in purpose relationships, loving each other, growing with each other. And for me as a pastor, it absolutely touches my heart. So I just wanna thank you again and encourage you to remain faithful to your group because it really is the plan of our church for discipleship and for continual health as we grow. So here's what I wanna do. This past Sunday, I concluded our series on the Holy Spirit. So I just wanna take a moment and recap the series. I won't take too long because I want you as a group to discuss all of what you've learned over the last few weeks because I think there's a lot of good stuff that you wanna engage and that will be good for your group. So we began the series talking about just in general who the Holy Spirit is, that he's not an it, he's a person. He's a part of what we refer to as the Godhead. Our God exists in three persons. That's how dynamic he is. He's God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. And the whole plan of redemption revolved around the Holy Spirit. So I, I know that sounds weird to some people because for many generations, there seems to be a hyper focus simply on Jesus. And you, you know my heart. I am not in any way trying to demean the work of Jesus on the cross, but there's no competition in the Godhead. This plan of God to redeem us included and was completed in the Holy Spirit. What Jesus did on the cross, he did so that we could become the temple of the Holy Spirit, so that his presence could become a part of our lives and live inside of us to provide for us every single thing that we need. So in week one, we went through that list of all the things Jesus said the Holy Spirit would do for us and why he said this will be better for us. Then we looked at the idea that God says for each one of us that we are to experience three baptisms. We are to have an authentic salvation experience. That's the first baptism. Then we are to be water baptized, saying to the world, I'm dying to myself to now be identified in resurrection with Jesus Christ. So I'm leaving my old self, my old way of thinking, now living for Jesus. And then the third baptism is the baptism in the Holy Spirit. And that happens when a person submits themselves to the Holy Spirit and, and invites him into their lives to fill them up and to radically change them from the inside out. Then the week after that, Pastor Chris taught a powerful message. If you were not there, you need to listen to it about how the, the Spirit of God speaks to us. This is his method of communicating is through his Spirit in our lives. Then we looked at the idea that God wants to convict us of our sins because there is this war going on inside of us between our flesh and now the Spirit of God. And so as God convicts us, the question is how do we respond to that conviction? And then this past week, we looked at this truth that really is one that I had to correct even the way that I've taught it in the past. And it's not, I don't want anyone to hear that when I say correct something because many of us have been taught the exact same thing. It's not that this teaching in and of itself is sinful or broken to the point where it's going to lead us astray. But the way that we taught it for years, even myself included, I think had brought some confusion. So now I just want to do a quick recap of Sunday. So we're looking at the idea what has been commonly referred to as the gifts of the Holy Spirit. The true way to teach us and understand it is not that there are gifts, plural in the sense that there are the nine gifts that we talk about, but instead there's one gift, and the gift is the Holy Spirit. He is the one that we receive. So as Paul was teaching this to the church in Corinth, what he was saying to them is, you receive the gift who is the Holy Spirit, and then this gift, him, the Holy Spirit, he manifests himself in our lives. And the reason this is so critical is many of us have had the idea that there are these different gifts, but not every single person can receive all of the gifts or one person can receive this gift and this person receives that gift. And the idea for some is I don't operate in that gifting because that's not a gift that I have received. But the truth is when you have received the gift of the Holy Spirit, all the other things are manifestations of who he is in our lives. And so when you receive the gift, you receive access to the manifestation of the Spirit in your lives. And what Scripture says is He's in control and He is going to be the one who determines when these are in operation, these manifestations in our lives. He's going to do it for the common good. So they're still His power. They're His gifts, if you want to word it that way. But because we have Him, then we have access to it. So the, the powerful convicting truth is for all of us who have surrendered ourselves to the Holy Spirit, received Him in our lives, 
we should be operating in these manifestations. We should be looking for opportunities for him to work through our lives because it is given, he is given for the common good to advance the kingdom of God. So we looked at the nine gifts. Let's see if I can quote them off the top of my head. So we have um, wisdom, we have knowledge, we have the discerning of spirit, we have healing, we have miracles, uh, we have prophecy, we have uh, faith, we have tongues, and we have the interpretation of tongues. All nine, nailed it. And uh, so these are nine things that are available to all of us. And again, when we look at them, and the reason I say again is because in week one of this series, we looked at what the Holy Spirit provides for us. When you look at these nine, I don't think any of us could look at them and say, I could do without a few of those. All nine of them are critical to our faith in the advancement of the kingdom of God. So here's what I want to encourage you to do. As you as a group now discuss the things of the Holy Spirit, I want you to talk about the things that you've learned. I want you to talk about how it's encouraged you. I want you to talk about the things that have challenged you in your understanding and operation with the Holy Spirit. And I want you to talk about the things now that you desire to grow in. And then hear me on this. You, I'm, I'm telling you as a group, you have to do this. You have to pray as a group for those areas for each other. So if you speak it out, then spend some time in that, in your group, praying over people. And this is new for some, but I would encourage you to lay hands on each other, pray for each other, that they might receive all that they are asking for from the Holy Spirit to operate in their lives. And I'm believing for some really awesome and dramatic things because when the Spirit of God interacts with the physical, the supernatural comes this way, our lives are radically changed. So everyone, I hope you are ex as excited as I was to teach in this series. I hope you're receiving this truth with excitement. I love you, I'm proud of you, and I can't wait to do the future together.